Hello everybody. So this is a mock-up of the reactor I'm going to be putting into Space Engineers. You can see I've chosen a cheese wedge shape. This is much better than the spherical shape that they went with because it can be uh, stacked and spun and fanned out in a lot of different ways for a very, very nice result. For example, you can just stack it up vertically and it just looks much, much better. Well, if you can... It looks much, much better than the uh, version that we would normally have to do with the uh, three balls stacked on top of each other. I'm not going to teach you how to model. I'm not going to teach you how to texture. There are people out there who are, oh, just much better at it than I am. Uh, and this is just a mock-up. I'm not going to be using this as the final thing. I'm just going to be putting it, putting it into the game world like this, getting a feel for how it looks, and then I'll be doing some more advanced work on it later. What I am going to teach you how to do is how to do texturing and mesh work in relationship to space engineers and this tool chain. We're going to start with texturing, so we're going to talk about texturing in this video. There are a couple of details that you need to keep track of. The first, all of your texture files need to be in your mod directory. You cannot be linking to another working directory somewhere else. They need to be in your mod directory because that's where the game is going to look for them, so obviously. The second thing is they cannot be .png files. As far as I know, they have to be .dds files. Um, now the recommended way that they give you for converting things into DDS is to steal Photoshop and install uh, some kind of tool that converts. You can just get GIMP. GIMP has a whole lot of shortcomings, but it can save as DDS. Ah, oh, I misspeak. It can't save as anything. Um, for some reason they don't allow you to save things as uh, anything other than their weird proprietary format, but you can export as .dds easily enough. Here we are in the base mod directory. This is where your blend files are. And we're going to go into textures, and then I've created a fictional company called XPAR, and then we're just going to save over one of these DDS files. They need it to be DXT5. I'm not sure which of these types of DXT5 they would prefer. We'll go with BC3, and if that's not good enough, we'll switch over later. And you want to generate MIP maps. There you go. You can use that in creating your materials just like you would normally do. So here's our material, here are the textures in our material and they are DDS files. Keep in mind that your materials, the, all of these diffuse and specular things, these are, as far as I know, not transferred over into Space Engineers. The only thing that is, is down here in the Space Engineers Materials section. Specular is probably the most important piece of this. High values like 30 and 30 give you something akin to Chrome, and that's controlled by your alpha channel on your normal map. So they've overloaded all of the alpha channels and that's, a sad, that's this, the, new, the new next thing you've got to remember. The alpha channels do not stand for what you think they stand for. Uh, if you need to create actual glass material you're gonna have to look up how to do that on your own but I'll give you a hint. Anyway, um, once you have understood that the alpha channels are overloaded you're going to have to be doing a lot of alpha channel work to get your materials to look like you want them to look. And the first step of that is your normal map is not just a flat normal map. The alpha channel controls how much specular power is applied. So my normal map is currently 100% opaque. And that means that these values are 100% applied. And I've just said that this should be a very, very chromey device. But I am going to go back and I'm going to cut down on the transparency. Uh, I'm going to make it really transparent later on. And I'm just going to have a couple of pieces that are left at 100% transparency, and those will be burnished, those will be chrome, and the rest will be much flatter. Alpha Channel has also been overloaded on your primary diffuse maps. Uh, there are two options for how you will be doing your diffuse maps, uh, and basically you choose between them by naming your file. So if we go over into our tools here, you can see that this is how that'll work. The first option is to name it underscore de.dds, and this is a very, very basic diffuse emissive map. The alpha channel controls how unemissive it is. So if you upload a transparent texture, it's going to glow, and if you upload a, a texture that's opaque, it's not going to glow at all. So if you just want to have some glowiness and some non-glowiness, this is how you would do that. This is what I'll be using for now. Later on, however, we will be switching over to the ME, which is the recolorable version of that. And this is a little bit more complex because they've split the alpha channel in half. 
We're not going to go into that right now. It's fairly straightforward, but since I'm not going to be doing it until much later on, we're not going to bother with it. Okay? In addition to the choice between the underscore DE and underscore ME, you also have a load of other possible materials that you can create. Again, we're not going to be doing this now. We're going to be doing this a little bit later on, uh, but we will be creating all of these emissive materials to allow our reactors and our batteries to have the correct uh, set of lights that turn on and power up and all that stuff. Haven't gotten that far yet. We're not going to cover it today. That's really all we're going to cover today. We need to have, to recap, your files need to be in your mod directory. Your files need to be .dds, and your alpha channels have been overloaded. If you keep those three things in mind, you'll probably be fine. Now keep in mind that there is no limit on the things that you can put into the game world, aside from some, you know, extraordinary edge cases. But if you do have uh, models that you've downloaded from somewhere else, or you've created on your own that for other games, they're fairly easy to put into Space Engineers. I can't recommend you do that if you don't own the copyright, but you can, for example, uh, find, say, um, a really complicated ball that looks great and you can just stick it in Space Engineers, but you are going to have to do this work of converting the textures over into Space Engineers format. With that in mind, I think that that's all I needed to cover for today, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will talk about mesh stuff.